Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the LifeBridge Health Magic of Life Gala. Please welcome Gala Chairs, Daniel Klein and Howard Perlow. Good evening, everyone. My name is Daniel Klein, and it has been my honor to serve as co-chair for this fantastic event with Howard Perlow. Wow, what a wonderful night to celebrate the life-saving services provided in our LifeBridge Health Hospitals. The talented and compassionate professionals of Sinai, Northwest, Carroll, and Levendale have taken care of you, me, and so many of our friends and family members throughout the generations. Howard and I agreed to take on the leadership of this major biennial fundraiser because we see firsthand the importance of the extraordinary care of our community hospitals provide every day to so many patients and their families. We've been overwhelmed by the positive response we've received from the many grateful patients and community business leaders we ask to support LifeBridge Health's mission by participating in tonight's event. Through the dedication and tireless effort of so many individuals, tonight's celebration is an outstanding success. We applaud our volunteer steering committee for the gift of their time and talent, which has been critical in bringing us to this moment. I'm so grateful for having had this incredible opportunity and that LifeBridge Health is here for the future generations of my family and yours. It is now my great pleasure to introduce to you my dedicated co-chair, Howard Perlow. <laughs> Howard is an inspirational business and community leader, as well as a member of the Levendale Board. You do need to applaud loud because we can't see you, but we are sure you're out there. Thank you, Daniel. It's been an honor for me to serve as co-chair with you this evening. The enormous success of tonight's celebration is only possible through the generous commitment of all of you in the audience. I'm particularly grateful that nobody asked me to sing tonight for a gift. We're fortunate to have partnered with numerous corporations, foundations, local businesses, families, and individuals throughout our community. Tonight, we would like to especially thank and recognize our most generous sponsors. Will those guests representing each sponsor please stand when I call your name? The top sponsors are featured on the screen behind me. Our crystal sponsor is the Whiting-Turner Contracting Company. <laughs> Platinum sponsors are Cerner Corporation, Crothal Healthcare, Owens and & Minor, and Bruce L. Rosenberg. Our diamond sponsors include Capital Office Solutions, MCARE, and M&T Bank. And our gold sponsors are the Baltimore Sun Media Group, Deutsche Bank Securities, Barry Garber and Michelle Lacks, Ansella and Michael Dopkin and family, and the classic catering people. Express Care, Urgent Care Centers, Greenberg Gibbons, the Philip and Harriet Klein Foundation, National Respiratory Care, Residential Title and Escrow, Commercial Settlement Services, and my wife, Ann Louise, and my children. Please join me in a round of applause for all of our top sponsors. Thank you very much. Tonight, 
I have the pleasure of introducing Neil Meltzer, President and CEO of LifeBridge Health. Under Neil's, under Neil's leadership, LifeBridge Health has expanded and thrived, growing to four hospitals, thousands of physicians, dozens of healthy business partnerships, and over 10,000 employees. Neil leads his team by example. He is the picture of compassion, thoughtfulness, and dedication that we all want in our caregivers, a commitment to the betterment of others, a dedication to caring for our communities together. I know you all will agree that Neil has so much energy and is truly such a sincere and capable leader that it is impossible to ever say no to him. In fact, Daniel and I still are not sure how he talked us into this two-year commitment. We're proud to be involved in such an important fundraising effort for our community. I ask you to please welcome Neil Meltzer. Thank you, Howard and Daniel. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let me thank all of you for joining us to celebrate in the magic of life. With your support, we're able to make miracles happen. Now, speaking of miracles, I was so excited when Daniel and Howard agreed to cheer this gala because I knew they were the right leaders for the job. Producing an event of this size is a daunting task, but from day one, their mantra was, we've got this, and they certainly did. I thank them and all the volunteers who worked with them tonight to make this event spectacular. I'd like to ask the members of Daniel and Howard's steering committee here tonight to stand and be recognized. Thank you. Thank you to each and every one of you for your leadership and support. I'd also like to thank Jason Blavitt, Chairman of LifeBridge Health, for his leadership, and Lynn Abeshaus, Abe excuse me, Lynn, Lynn Abeshaus, Chairman of our Development Committee, for her vision to increase the impact of philanthropy throughout our health system. <laughs> I'm humbled by the philanthropic support of our community. Keeping an almost $2 billion organization healthy and thriving is only possible through extraordinary community engagement. And the impact of ph philanthropy is tremendous. From the very beginning, Daniel Howard and I knew that we wanted tonight to be about the thousands of patients who strive for hope and recovery every day. I'm motivated and inspired by the stories I hear. Stories about real life situations that take place in all of our healthcare centers. I've seen how the real magic takes place between the patient and their family and the LifeBridge clinician by their side. Oftentimes, these moments are not expected or anticipated. They cover every range of emotion from great joy to anxiety to sadness or even grief. But one thing is a constant. It's a moment in time that will be remembered forever. This is when our extraordinary clinicians shine brighter than all others. Moments like these don't happen simply by chance. They happen by finding and hiring the right people, talented, hardworking, enthusiastic people who devote their lives to delivering superb care to our patients and their families. Only with them can we fulfill our mission to care for our communities one person at a time. I'm proud of what LifeBridge Health has become with more than 10,000 employees and associates and nearly 1,800 physicians providing compassionate care to more than 1 million people every year. Our growth is a result of our ancestors' focus on the promise they made to each other and to our communities 152 years ago when they pledged to care for the most vulnerable in the most compassionate way possible. Now, I'd like you to turn your attention to the screen
to learn about some true stories of courage and recovery. These stories are proof that hope, love, and excellent patient care can surmount even the most difficult odds. The day that I was injured um, in the line of duty of Baltimore City Police Department, I had responded to a vehicle that needs assistance of an accident. As we were preparing to make, uh, finish up the call, a speedy driver uh, struck my patrol car, which struck me and caused me to fall 30 feet off of the interstate. To go from seemingly fine to being told that your son has cancer was uh, like getting sucker punched. <laughs> he was always a communicator, you know, spokesman for the company or in marketing, whatever, dealing with the public. And so the stroke for us has been huge because as a communicator and then you have a stroke and you don't speak very well, it's a huge challenge and it was something that rocked both of us to the core, but especially Denny. I really had a hard time with the um, recommendation of chemo. I think I struggled with that even more than the fact that I had cancer. Um, chemo is for sick people, I'm not sick. My mom, Doris, is a force to be reckoned with. I believe they referred to her as a spitfire in the Jewish Times a few weeks ago, and that really says it all. I think, I'm not even sure how old I am. <laughs> it got away from me. <laughs> I think 102. And I feel, I thank the good Lord that I lived to the age, that I also can make people feel good with my music. That makes me feel good. old smile. I'd rather miss the mill than miss my piano. I earn a mitzvah when I play for people. So I was diagnosed roughly three years ago. Um, my diagnosis was that I was at stage 3C and didn't really have a whole lot of time to look at options and make up my mind it needed to happen now. That ride in the ambulance I, I just felt so lonely. It was, that's all I can, that's the only way I can explain it. The guy that I would wake up in the morning and we'd just start chatting, you know, and chatting throughout the day. And, and um, we always loved talking and we would share about books we were reading. He couldn't talk to me. I've got a box full of medicines that I could sit you here, but the one that I would probably put in front of you is actually a liquid. It's one of the only liquids he takes, but it's a depression medication. I've got a four-year-old who's on depression medication because this beat him up so badly. Caroline said earlier, you know, the boy never had a, a fourth year of his life. I've had a lot of issues. I've had several broken bones. I've had my left side of my face was basically completely crushed. So I have a lot of metal in my, on the left side. I have metal mesh under my eye socket. Both sides of my pelvis were broken. My femur bone was broken. I had a compound fracture. So I have metal rod, all types of metal and titanium. I've had neck issues, definitely depression because this has been a, a big life changing event for me. I had speech therapy and I had um, occupational therapy here at Sinai. And without those therapists, um, I would not have come this far.
I started with Dr. Hobart. <laughs> I had several panic attacks in her office, and um, she shared with me how she knew exactly how I felt because she had had cancer twice herself. And uh, boy, that put things in perspective. Here was this beautiful, intelligent woman who was going to save my life, has been in my seat. She knows exactly where I'm coming from. That was uh, tremendous. As I look now back, you know, a year and a half after the diagnosis, um, we live with more purpose, I think. Um, we like to say there are three letters that kind of define what the Oberlies are about. Um, it, we call it SIP, service, integrity, and what's the P? Perseverance. Perseverance. My mom has had many honors over her lifetime. And I think one of the highlights was the Maryland Senior Hall of Fame. I volunteered playing piano for Lemondale for 40 years. And I hope God gives me another 40 years. <laughs> when we had that stroke, we were at the hospital. Sorry. And she told me, she says, you're gonna fight. You're not ever gonna give up. You're gonna fight. And she was right. Yeah. Yeah. He was a military man. He was a leader. And I didn't want him to crawl up in a hole and feel sorry for himself. There is a, a delicate balance between faith and friends and family and support and also the medical care that needs to happen. And I think they, for a successful treatment, I think you really need, you have to have both. Every therapist at Sinai definitely helped me achieve every goal that I had, every goal. They are very wonderful. The place is filled and the care is great. If not, I wouldn't be sitting here. I would tell my daughter, take me out. I'm here every day. When I say goodbye, Mom, I know that I'm leaving her in good hands. When I think of Sinai Hospital, I'm thinking of world-class medicine in a community hospital setting. The nurses and everybody we had were fantastic. I, I mean, I couldn't ask for anything better. I feel like I have the world by the tail now. We're done November 2017. I believe actually November 22nd, 2017. Not that I'm counting, but hopefully it'll be a very happy Thanksgiving. Well, that meant they'll make it feel like you're home. It's amazing that I'm even here to share my story. If you have to go to the hospital and you have to have something critical, I mean, even if you don't, but this is the place to be. It was just awesome. And it was. We were just totally surprised. And yeah, I would definitely. If definitely I was going right to have a stroke now. again, I'd go there. <laughs> but you're not. <laughs> but don't have That it. is not on the plan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Teresa Rigby Menendez. Now joining us on stage 
Welcome Caroline and Brian Oberly and their son, Andrew. Please welcome Faith and Dennis Bilter. Now coming on stage, welcome Lisa Schwartzbeck. Doris, a Levendale resident who just celebrated her 102nd birthday, wasn't able to be here because she told me that tonight's event is way past her bedtime. <laughs> however, I kid you not, however, we're pleased her daughters, Barbara and Susan, are in the audience this evening. My heroes right here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, celebrating the magic in these stories is what tonight is all about. I hope you have the opportunity to talk with Teresa, Dennis, Andrew, and Lisa after the show because it's their stories that inspire us. I want each of you here tonight to know that your support provides hope to those who need it most each and every day, so I thank you. And now, I'd like to invite Howard, Daniel, and Anna back on stage for a very special announcement. I got a feeling that tonight's gonna be a good night. That tonight's gonna be a good night. So I would like to introduce my wife, Anna, and ask you to... You, got, you guys beat me to it, but I was going to ask you to please join me in a round of applause for her and for Howard's wife, Anne Louise Perlow, and for their efforts in making this fantastic night possible. And Anne Louise is in the audience tonight, and we thank you very much for your support, Anne Louise. In 2014, Laura Black and Brian Gibbons set the bar very high for us. This year, through the participation of so many of you, we have exceeded even our own expectations. The money raised tonight will directly impact LifeBridge Health's mission to provide co compassionate and life-saving care to thousands, sorry, stuck together, sorry, to people in our community. Please watch the screen now as we reveal your generosity. And how can we thank Daniel, Anna, Howard, Anne Louise, and all of you enough? On behalf of the LifeBridge Health family, I want to thank everyone here tonight for your support. We're all under the same roof with many untold stories about our family's fight to continue to experience the magic of life. What a tremendous testimony to our community's commitment. Thank you, Neil. A little taller than Neil is, so. 
<laughs> to our community's commitment to Sinai, Northwest, Carroll, and Levendale. Thank you all, and please stay in your seats to enjoy our spectacular performer, Cheryl Crow, who also has a life-saving story as a cancer survivor. <laughs> 